Hi there. Radio can be a complex subject depending on your communication goals, and if you're new to radio, that can make deciding where to start difficult. I got the inspiration for this video from a few people I talked to, and one of them is another content creator, some are subs, and another one is trying to learn about amateur radio. If I could summarize our conversations regarding their collective angst about the ham radio community, it would be the following. There are a lot of opinions when it comes to radio, and that genuinely frustrates a lot of new people who want to learn about the technology, but they get overwhelmed with the amount of information, personal views, egos, and attitudes of others they encounter while searching for guidance. Sometimes that frustration can boil over and cause People don't want to give up and say, just tell me what radio to get. I wish I could say this sentiment is rare, but I hear it a lot from people who are curious about radio, but for one reason or another, they're turned off to it by those they're seeking guidance from. I've heard many hams recommend people start with something like this Yesu FT60 because it was their first quality radio when they started out as a hobbyist. No doubt, this is a solid radio. I've got a couple of them myself, but it's also a $155 radio. Recommending this one isn't bad advice, but the ham making that recommendation may not realize that they're talking to someone other than another hobbyist. Maybe they're talking to a prepper, someone who's into off-roading. Using those two examples, the prepper may have use for this FT60, but if they're not a licensed amateur radio operator, then this radio won't do them much good unless they're only using it for monitoring because they wouldn't be able to legally transmit on any of the amateur bands. The same applies for the off-road enthusiast. Unless you want to get your amateur radio license, GMRS is probably a better alternative for most people because the barrier to entry is low, you don't have to take a test to get a license, and you can use repeaters. I'm sure there's a lot of groups and individuals out there with varying interests trying to figure out how to incorporate comms into their activities. I think a logical starting point is to ask, what are you trying to accomplish? Despite people's varying interests, I think there are some common needs that generally apply to everyone. For example, many people I talk to want a reasonably priced radio they can expand on, but may not be prepared to invest the time to learn all they need to know about radio. The problem with wanting someone to help you figure out what radio you should buy is there's no perfect radio in existence to satisfy everyone's needs or wants. Instead of searching for a radio that can do it all, I think it's more appropriate to determine what kind of kit one can assemble that addresses the following. The price point of the kit needs to be affordable for the common person. The ability to source accessories for that kit should be common and readily available. The kit needs to be easy to operate with low maintenance, and it needs to have basic elements of interoperability. Since not everyone's an amateur radio hobbyist, on the table I put together what I think a general purpose kit might look like. There's nothing wrong with starting out with a Bofeng UV-5R, or you can get the GMRS version, which I believe is marketed as the 5X slash 5G. And the difference between this UV-5R and the 5X slash 5G is the UV-5R is intended for use on amateur radio frequencies like 2 meter and 70 centimeters, and the 5X slash 5G is intended for use on only the GMRS frequencies. I've seen this UV-5R retail online on average between $25 and $35 for one radio. Of course, if you purchase a set, then it'll be more, and I believe the GMRS version of this is around the same price. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons I like GMRS for someone just starting out in radio and isn't quite prepared to uh, pursue an amateur radio license is because the barrier to entry is low. There are also many affordable GMRS radios on the market to choose from, and you can use repeaters. I'm choosing not to make the radio the most expensive piece of this kit because we're trying to keep costs down. And this radio here, whether you 
choose the UV5R or the GMRS version should be enough to service most needs for someone new to radio. In addition to whatever flavor of Bofeng you choose, I think the uh, rest of these accessories that I have here will help round out your comms kit. And some of these items you might recognize from past videos like episode 16 where I discussed power for comms and episode 9 where I covered accessories and how interoperability is one of my goals for all my kits. But next up would be the uh, higher capacity batteries and the USB uh, charge cable. And I have a few of these batteries for my Bofangs and I've mentioned this earlier in uh, other videos, but I'll say it again. The reason I like these particular batteries is because they have a uh, DC port on the side and I can uh, charge them with this USB cable. And I got these batteries and the cable from Amazon. Next would be spare antennas. And uh, the Slim Jim antenna I have here is from N9TAX Labs. And this one is for the two meter slash 70 centimeters band. And they also have other offerings for GMRS and MERS, but uh, this one that I purchased had the option of adding this uh, BNC mail connector. And you can easily throw one of these up into a tree, or if a tree isn't available and you need a uh, a mass to go along with your Slim Jim antenna, a tent pole should work just fine. I also have this uh, Nagoya NA771 whip antenna. I also got this off Amazon and this is just a, a nice upgrade from this stock antenna. The battery I have here is from a previous video and I'm currently using it with my HF rig. You don't need to purchase this one. I'm just using it to demo with this uh, charge controller, which I'll talk about next. But this battery retails for around $124 from PowerWorks.com. But there's a more affordable lithium battery I'll show on the screen in a moment, which you can get. And that one retails for around $50. And that is the one I would run with this particular kit because it's cheaper and it's a little lighter to carry than the one I have here. I demoed this uh, Genesis GB5 solar charge controller in uh, previous videos, and I'm including it in this kit because I think this is a solid charge controller for the money. As mentioned in other videos, if you're running either a lithium battery like this one or a sealed lead acid battery, make sure the controller you're using is for that type of battery. Next up would be uh, just some adapters, and I have a assortment of adapters here I put together uh, that travel with all my kits. I also got those off Amazon. So as far as the solar panels concerned, um, I have this Thunderbolt 18 watt solar panel. I checked on the line and I wasn't able to find this exact one. I've had this one for a few years, but there are others online for around $30, and some of those are actually a little bit better. This one, they're foldable and uh, a little bit more portable but, than this one. But um, you don't need to uh, go too crazy on the uh, solar panel for this kit because all we're trying to do is trickle charge our battery in the field and uh, just keep our uh, radio batteries running. I think this is a good foundation to help most people get started no matter what your interest is. I know that there are some out there who will trash this UV5R and say, well, for a little more money, you can get a higher quality radio. But as I pointed out earlier, not everyone is a hobbyist. So while an expensive handheld like this AFT60 may be practical for a ham, it may not be for someone who has other interests and needs. There are going to be some people who say, well, the UV5R isn't water resistant. What about the water resistant Bofeng models on the market like the GT3WP or UV9R? Those are fine too. And they're comparable in my opinion to the UV5R and its variants as far as functionality is concerned. 
the difference with those is they don't use the Kenwood two pin connector for accessories like hand mics that the uh, UV5R does. They use a multi pin accessory connection. Although you can purchase an adapter for the multi pin connection radios so you can run your Kenwood two pin accessories. I did two stress test videos, episodes 10 and 12, that included a UV5R, and that radio was the only one which didn't have an ingress protection rating for dust and water. The other radios tested were touted as having some level of water resistance to being submerged, and although the UV5R was the first to short out when I put them in the water tank, it was able to recover after drying out, and the UV5Rs I tested also made it all the way to the end of each stress test. My point is that radio is not as fragile as some would have you believe, which is usually one of the main arguments I hear people cite when telling others not to waste their money on one and uh, buy a higher quality radio. If you happen to drop your UV5R into the water and you pull it out right away, then it's probably going to be okay. If you're not in a position to immediately open up the radio to clean it after being submersed, then I would say remove the antenna and battery and let the radio dry. But if you're able, you can combat the long-term effects of corrosion by disassembling it and using rubbing alcohol to clean the circuit board. I've heard some recommendations to put water-damaged electronics in a bag of rice, and the thinking is the rice will draw out the moisture. But the problem with that is if water hits certain parts of the circuit board, then it's going to oxidize areas like the joints that have been soldered. The rice isn't going to displace the water, but cleaning the board with rubbing alcohol will help mitigate the damage. I'll leave a link to the article I read about uh, this in the description below. No matter your particular interest area, the kit I'm proposing here will keep you busy for a while. Not only are you just learning about radio, but you'll also uh, get exposure to incorporating solar into your comms and different types of connectors and adapters, all of which will get you thinking about how to make future equipment interoperable with the uh, equipment you already have. If you add up everything here I've proposed, it totals approximately $149, which is a few dollars less than the price of one Yesu FT60. Anyway, I hope this video was informative, and that's all for now.